Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for a dynamic effort lower day. But a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please re remember to click a like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. So uh, I'm continuing to run the higher percentages closer to west size percentages instead of winnings for the speed work, which means I have to be very careful of the volumes here uh, because my accessory volume is, is also pretty high. Uh, one of the things that I decided to do with this is to work the belt squats in. I cut the sled drags back out. I had been sled dragging three days a week. Uh, I don't need it right now. I need to focus on body composition as much as possible in the weight room and just use walking and my weighted walking, right? My, my backpack and my weight vest uh, just to burn the calories. I'm not going to use my GPP to burn calories. My GPP is already very high. So I want to just get as much hypertrophy work as I can recover from behind all of the uh, dynamic work because I'm just going to burn calories with the other stuff. I want to keep body composition on point. Uh, the scale is starting to slowly drift back down now. Starting to see the scale come down. I'm looking leaner today on camera. I was definitely leaner in the mirror this morning. So uh, now I feel comfortable that I'm going to be able to make weight. I was really worried about it after bulking because uh, some people had said, have asked me things like, hey, did you change supplementation, magic supplements? Uh, no, actually didn't. Nothing like that changed from this meat prep and the others. I simply ate more. Keep in mind, I started at a very heavy body weight, uh, you know, a year before getting back on the platform. And I've spent the first half of this year in a, in a very small calorie deficit. I increased my carbs dramatically after this last meet. And it filled me out. That's why people said, wow, you look a lot bigger and thicker. Well, that's what happens. Uh, now my carbs are closer to where they were previously, so I'm starting to, to drop some of the bloat, and we can see that I have added some quality muscle tissue. Absolutely added some muscle. But one of the things I noted here is that I'm feeling this heavier work. I'm feeling the heavier speed work in things like my quads. Uh, feeling a lot of the grip against the bands with the speed pulls using the bands, and I want to use this as a major part of my grip training. I'm feeling it. Uh, and I think what I want to do for rear delts and biceps and all of that, because I had said I was going to start doing rows on these days, but I don't know that my recovery is, is good for it in a deficit with all the other hypertrophy work. And my lats are absolutely not an issue. They're easily my largest muscle group. So I'm not worried about them. In fact, I had that overuse issue from a lat earlier in this training cycle. Had that overuse issue. So I think I just want to start doing a lot of face pulls, a lot of banded face pulls. That will give me any additional upper back and delt volume that I need. Uh, in addition to being bicep work and forearm work. I know people say, well, that doesn't count. It absolutely counts. Absolutely counts. Add that on top of the, the quality set of 10 sets of rows I do every week. I think we're in a good spot there. But yeah, the speed pulls hammered my grip. Um, and I've decided with the good mornings, I want to push good mornings hard. I've set a goal of getting to a 600 pound good morning. May not get there before this meet, but I want to get there. So what I'm doing is one peak set. I'm doing just some ramping up and seeing how weight feels and then seeing how heavy I think I can go after testing, you know, one and two reps uh, ramping up. Today I realized, okay, I think I could do 350 beltless for 10. Okay, goal, I want 405. I want 405 for 10 reps with this bar. I feel like if I can do that, I have a I have a 600 good morning. If I can good morning 600, where's my, my deadlift and squat going to be? It's going to be up there. Uh, what I've decided to do, because I've noticed these belt squats, 
if I'm not careful, they've really put a lot of fatigue on my, my tendons. So what's our solution to that? And normally I don't do low reps. I don't normally do low reps. I'm going to have to go with Dave Tate on this one, though. How's our solution to that? Minimize the number of knee bends we do. I can do three sets of five as heavy as I can get away with. Right? Into the deepest range of motion possible, which is what we're seeing here. I'll get all the quad and adductor development I need. And the volume is going to be much lower here. And mainly it's because the fatigue on the tendons. It just starts to accumulate. And normally high rep stuff is good for this. And I've noticed for me, as I get a little older, my tendons don't like it. My joints feel fine. My knees themselves don't hurt. It's just those tendons where the quads insert. They just don't like it. And I have to be mindful of that. And then we have to go, what's, the, what's my minimum volumes there? Because I probably do need the quads to get some stimulus beyond just the speed work. I had been doing sled drags, but again, I'm going to cut those out for a bit. Normally, sled drags will handle it. I need to focus on direct tension. It's going to give me the best hypertrophy at the moment. So that's going to be my compromise. That's going to be my compromise. And I think... It's a reasonable one. I think it's a reasonable one. And I think for close assistance movements, we can we can get away with that occasionally, fives and things, as long as we limit it and only make it in movements that we need it for. So uh, I'm happy with that. And I know I could have gone a hair heavier, so I'm going to work on just progressive overload in that moderate rep range, just a little bit on the belt squat just on the belt squat for now and then we're going to keep the volumes very high on the other stuff the glute ham raises the reverse hypers and we're going to push progression on those reverse hypers right i found today i'm stronger on them again you know i went up another five pounds today and i got like 15 or 16 reps on the last set okay i need to take that up i need to work up towards uh 600 for sets of 10. So what are, we, what are we aiming for for some of this assistance stuff? I'd like to see 600 for 5 by 10 there. I'd like to see 600 for a single on the good morning. I want to see 405 for 10 on a good morning. We can do that. We're going to keep getting stronger. And notice that's mostly posterior chain stuff. Yeah. My quads are going to grow no matter what. I need to make sure... The entire posterior chain is strong. I'm not as worried on these glute ham raises because to me these are an injury prevention and, and just getting the additional development. Progressing on those other movements will handle most of the hypertrophy. This is just handling the secondary stuff like the um, the other head. And gosh, I forget. The name of the head eludes me. I've said it before. It's the biceps from Morris. I believe that's it. Uh, does get stimulated directly on this movement and not on the hip hinges. Only through a radiation effect on them. So this is just ensuring all three heads are fully developed. Giving me a, a lower chance of hamstring pulls. That also helps protect the low back. Because hamstring weaknesses can oftentimes cause a lumbar rounding or lumbar flexion. And it gives me a bigger cushion to bounce off of out of the bottom of a squat. So it protects my back on the, helps protect it on the good morning and the deadlift. The reverse hyper is a primary mover. Hey, this will directly build the deadlift in addition to the prehab. So we, we put our, our volume into these traction based movements, the ones that we recover from easiest. But we're going to push major progress on the good morning on the reverse hyper and with the good morning so the question becomes why only the one set because it's heavy and it's a lot of axial loading these are all both traction based movements the good morning does have an axial loading component it's still easier on you than a squat still easier on you than a deadlift in regards to that but it's still present but i also know that i can almost always squat more than i good morning 
So you guys see my logic behind the, the 600 good morning? If we can do 600 on a good morning, what's my squat going to be at? What's my deadlift going to be at? I think I'll squat 600 again. I think a 600 good morning will ensure me a 600 squat. It may get me close to a 700 deadlift. And it's the same with these reverse hypers. All right, we want to get these up to 600 for 10s. And we may end up getting close to maxing out the machine and just have to do more reps, and that's okay. It's okay. I've come a point where I just need to buy a bigger reverse hyper anyways. And that may happen this next year. It might have to happen. And if it does, it does. Uh, I look forward to it if that's the case. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.